and I guess I always do that first um, <laughs> because if I don't hit record on Zoom first and just go live on YouTube, I don't have a backup. And I like to have a backup. I hit record too. Don't know if it works, you know, half the gotcha. time. <laughs> sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. We'll just give it a go. I gotcha. All right. Well, let's see. According to Zoom, we are live. I don't see it yet, but we'll see what's going on there. Yes. All right. Awesome. And I'm just going to do a quick, the last time we did this, sometimes for some reason, if I don't put a thing into our chat, it doesn't release the chat to be able to huh. use. So I did that now. So everyone should be able to, if you are just joining us, hello, my name is Sheila Corona. And this is my co-host, Lisa Risingberry. And you are joining Rising Consciousness already in progress. <laughs> uh, today is Wednesday. February the 10th, 2021. Thank you so much for joining us. And um, so we're going to talk about something I didn't get a chance to see. And I'm actually, this is really going to be very interesting. I was hesitant at first. I'm going to say that. I, um, because I haven't seen it. We're going to talk about the Super Bowl halftime show because uh, Lisa did see it. Lisa, I'm going to actually pull up your post on that, if you don't mind. Oh, sure. Because but, I did. But that, that, yeah, that, I mean, I wrote a little bit, but then the majority of that post was written by someone else. And so they just kind of did my work for me. Well, you also did a, a follow-up, I see here now. I think this is a follow-up. You said, I know not everyone enjoyed the Super Bowl mm -hmm. halftime performance, but here is the story behind the show. As a performer, I understand knowing the meaning behind a performance is necessary to enjoy and understand the intention. It enables you to go beyond the music and dance and get to the message of the artist. And uh, so this was a post, uh, a compilation. Let me just, uh, I'm going to actually share my screen is that all right if i do oh, that of course okay because your your page is open right yeah okay. I, I think i shared that publicly so right well i know i saw it I, okay I, so I apparently scared. and i'll need you to help out a little bit too this this person right here is called the weekend is this correct <laughs> I, think that's one of them. That, I, I, I'm, I know his songs. I love all his songs and, but I'm not really very good with names. Um, ah, okay. But I, I've not heard of this artist yeah. and, you know, I prove positive that I'm an old person. I, I, <laughs> I didn't, I didn't know any of this. And I preface our conversation today by saying that I did not see the Super Bowl halftime, but um, you and I, through our conversation, uh, you know, I was sharing with you that, I, and you too had said that, um, you know, oftentimes these performances are used as rituals. Historically, they have been. Um, and I know that that's a <laughs> conspiracy theory that a lot of folks can't and won't look at or even consider or be open to considering. And um, I don't know, uh, I kind of, the last one I really paid attention to was the 2012 uh, Olympics. And because of the push for globalism, because of all of these different um, things that for me over the years have very clearly looked to me to be a a compilation of globalist dark magicians who obviously know what they're doing and they pull the creative energy of the focus and attention of those who are not aware that they are creators with every breath they take and like Miley says, very fond of saying, if you are not running your own focus and attention, at, which is your energy, which is your currency, which is how we all create, 
someone else is all too happy to direct that energy and attention for you. So um, having seen a lot of these things in the past, I do come at, I, that's why I say we, it's, we have to get over the whole idea of woo-woo. And this is actually part of that conversation for me as well. Um, because they, because it is, it's right there. It's just in plain view. And I, like I said, I didn't get to see this one. So I, but I'll be honest with you. I, I highly doubt that it didn't have some significance. So, but I would love for you to share um, you know, more about it and, and what you saw and felt about it. Okay. Well, first of all, I, I want to go back to the 2012 Olympics and, you know, because, you know, well, first, actually, before I even go into that, there is a lot of imbalance right now, you know, with, with our conspiracy brothers and sisters, you know, um, it's kind of sad. It makes me sad because they, they are in so much fear right now that everything is terrifying them and everything is out to get them everything's going to kill them and 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 those things that they're feeling feeling fearing right now aren't, aren't is not what what's going to kill them it's not what's going to affect them it's their monkey mind uh it's it's their their fear and and their inability to master their mind and their ability to control their emotions that's that's what's going to kill them uh that'll kill them sooner than any vaccine they do or don't take you know, you cannot take the vaccine and that's fine, you know, um, but if you're terrified of it, that is what's going to kill you. Not Corona, not the vaccine. It's, it's the fear. So, you know, I'm seeing a lot of imbalance in that and, you know, which makes me sad for an important reason is because there's, you know, nothing's a hundred percent from my perspective, you know, that's just been my personal experience of life. And so there, there are truths in the conspiracies that everyone needs to be aware of, but not afraid of them. Master your mind, don't be afraid, have no fear, you're in control. But you know, there's just so much imbalance in that right now that the, the information that they're putting out is, is incorrect. It's physically incorrect and it's clairvoyantly incorrect and it's coming from fear. It's not informative. They're right now, they're hurting people and they aren't helping people. And I just, you know, I want them to, to go back to where they were uh, years ago, years ago, where they, you know, they, they were more rational um, and they were more informative and, and they helped a lot of people, myself included, you know, um, but then, I, I learned how to rise above that and I learned how to protect myself. So, however, bringing my attention to the 2012 Olympics, you know, that and many other uh, public displays were very, they, they had satanic symbols. They had symbology that most people don't understand. I mean, I, I, I was not writing articles in 2012 but I could have written a doozy of an article and when all of the symbology that was so dark and the energy coming off of it was horrible. Um, and, and the reason why they did that is because they were also misinformed on what 2012 was. 2012, you know, um, they, they really thought, you know, that these, these people who thought that they had correct Mayan information put it out that, you know, that that was the beginning of the golden age and we can, you know, the mass ascensions were going to take place and all this, these crazy theories that never happened, you know. Um, and so, however, these, these, these dark magicians, the, the ones that are really pulling the strings, they, they know what the public is believing. Um, so what better way to scare everybody to, to make, you know, they knew that the dark magicians knew what the true meaning of 2012. They knew no mass ascensions were gonna happen. They knew that this was not the beginning of the golden age. They, they, they knew the correct information, but they aren't gonna put that out. If the public wants to believe puppycock, then they're gonna support it and they're gonna make them afraid. So they created this, um, this, it was just a dark magic ritual. 
for for that for that opening ceremony and so people were convinced the reason why that was happening is because the dark agenda wants to stop this from happening no they just wanted to make you more scared there was nothing to stop they just wanted to feed into people's fears more it did to me it scared the bejeebies out of me because i really wasn't good at protecting myself back then and i i, I was fresh out of mystery school i knew what all that stuff was and you know and i felt that energy coming into my body and if you weren't aware of it, you know, I think that's even scarier because, you know, you know, at least I had, I, I tried some way not to let it control my mind. I, 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 I tried as much as I could not to let that energy come into my body. But if you're, if you, like, like you said, if, if you're not the master of your mind and someone else is going to take control of it and they're going to put in it, whatever they want. And that is proven through hypnosis. You can, you can hypnotize someone um, and, and put someone in front of them and tell them that there is no one there and they can see through that person and see something behind them because they, they have been mind controlled and, and, and told that that person does not exist. And then, so they're, they're hypnotized. It kind of works in this, it, it's, it's, a, it's not as bad as that, but it kind of works in a similar way. That's why I teach mind mastery and I want people to learn how to master their minds. So this stuff does exist. Um, it was really bad from, you know, 2007, 8, 12, and then, and then it kind of died off a little bit, and then it started to pick up a little bit, and now I'm seeing a big drop off, and, but I'm seeing the paranoia and the fear still there, like people, it, it's like an open wound, and, and, and they're thinking that everything is a black magic attack, everything is you know, this, this dark agenda. And, and right now we need to kind of take a collective breath and, and use some discernment. And right now with this new energy that we're in, it's very difficult, number one, to, to kind of pull those things off. Um, and I'm not seeing it as much. So, you know, I, I was raised a dancer, which served me well for my llama studies because it, it did teach me mind mastery. It, it taught me, you know, that, that's a whole other show. Of, of what what that taught me but you know I watch the halftime show and I watch performances because I've lived my life on stage I've always been in the spotlight I, I've always been there in the public so I, I, I appreciate other performers are some performers wacky and kind of lean towards that dark side yeah are they participants in it some of them are most aren't they're just using it for propaganda to, to pull in other people that might be like them or just to make money. If it doesn't make money, they aren't gonna do it, plain and simple. Um, so with this new energy, we're, we're, we will start seeing a decrease in that um, because that's not the dominant energy anymore that, that we're dealing with. So anyway, I watched the Super Bowl from a choreographer, professional dancer, performer point of view. Um, the spirituality is always there with me. And if there's anything wrong, that that just goes off for me. You know, I, I, I was like, oh, Houston, we have a problem here. And so this performer, I, I love his music and his personal journey has been, been really strong, um, you know, and that is what this performance was about. And it was so misinterpreted. Um, did, did I like the way he did it from a performing point of view? No, because he didn't give the background story before. There was no playbill. That, that's what, a, 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 you, when, when you go to the theater, you get a playbill and it, it tells you what you're about to see. Even for a ballet, it tells you what you're about to see. And in fact, I had to do in a performance, which I thought was just I thought it was stupid because she, the, our, our choreographer wanted us to act in these ways that she's, that I just knew the audience wasn't going to understand this ballet. And, and all of us felt the same way. And she's like, no, nope, you're, you're going to write the script with your bodies. We're, we're not going to tell them what it is ahead of time. I felt like an idiot. I pulled it off. People really didn't understand it. We were correct. We were totally correct. So he should have explained the backstory first, because once you know the backstory and then you go back and watch it on YouTube, you're like, oh, okay. So, you know, it, it's a story about his journey as a performer, which he paid for 
all through his own money to, to try to get this message across, which failed, um, you know, but it, it was about him being in the limelight and, um, you know, being on top of the world as a performer and then wanting to, to conform to society to look a certain way and be a certain way. And then one of the songs is blinded by the light. And then he's in this tunnel of mirrors and this light and he's blinded by what he's seeing of himself. And it's just confusing. Of course, everyone's saying that's the hall of mirrors and this is that it's satanic. No, it's his personal demons. It was his personal issues that he was dealing with. And then, then he comes out of it and he has plastic surgery, which he didn't hide from the public. And so then they had the dancers all dressed, all male, no female dancers. There was no sexuality in this, which, which was kind of nice that they, to they, they, to they toned down the, the sluttiness of it. There, there, that, that was not there. You know? There was no negative divine feminine and energy in this at all. And they were all, the, the choreography I didn't like, but it, it served his purpose. It was very uh, robotic. And, you know, there was not, it, it wasn't, there wasn't a lot of creativity. Um, and they had these masks on their face that people misinterpreted. They, they thought it was like Jason from the horror movies, or they thought it was like the, the, uh, the, um, the, the, the Republic from Star Wars, or they, you know, they, they just had all these different theories and, and they, and they were all wrong. They were plastic surgery bandages. And the reason why everybody looked the same and, and they were all at the same build. They were all at the same height. There was like, there was like no, no, no differences because that's what the music industry wants. They, they want to cook, cookie cutter, make everybody the same. You can't be an individual. You have to be what we tell you to be. You have to have this surgery or we're just not going to pay you. You're not, you're not going to make the big bucks, you know, um, which is why he paid his own big bucks to, to put this message out. And so, you know, and that really freaked everybody out. Um, and that's, and that, that, and then, then he comes out and then he's healed and every, you know, he, he sees, you know, he should have done a lot of the things he did for money. So, so it so sounds like, it sounds like what, be, again, uh, you know, it's kind of unfair for me to speak on it since I haven't seen it, but what you're describing to me sounds very much like a personal journey that was put mm -hmm. on display. Yeah. Um, that's what it was. And so I, I, I am going to absolutely have to go and take a look at this, but I, and, and for me, even if someone is viewing this through that perspective or that lens that you spoke on for, I, I, for me personally, I, I see now where everything I ever looked into, thought, felt, whatever, has all been puzzle pieces leading me in the direction that I was desirous of experiencing and bringing me the information that I, for whatever reason, could benefit from having delved into, whether it would be right or wrong, whether it was teaching me discernment, whether it was showing me a piece. Um, because quite frankly, again, not having seen this one for myself as of yet, I have questions that because you've you, you've indicated quite heavily through all of this and even the uh, the other poster that posted about this, that this person, which again, you know, I have no idea who this person is. I've never heard of them. Maybe I've heard their music, but I just don't know it. I'm, I'm, I pay very close attention to what comes into my field anymore. Um, so I'm, I'm quite interested and a little confused as to why anyone, regardless of the kind of cashola they might have, would spend the kind of cash that it sounds like this person did to tell a story. And quite frankly, if they're spending that much cash and they didn't tell it from even from you're a performer, you're a past performer and you knew that there would need to be a playbill and you knew the story was really the only reason you got it. Yeah. And okay. so uh, you, you have to ask the question because the, you know, the Super Bowl, again, part of the reason I don't watch it is the energy harvesting mechanism that I feel it is. And 
gazillions of dollars are paid for mm -hmm. advertisement. And I would imagine just the very fact that they're trying to recapture a whole lot of money that's been lost over not having sports for a little while. That this person, again, not obviously not a household name because even though you like their music, you don't remember their name. No, I don't, I don't really go by the names. I just go by the music and- Right, so not a household name. No. By no, any means. Not but but spent their own money rather than because usually those so so are you saying this person wasn't paid for this performance they paid to well i don't know i'm sure wow. he i'm sure he received something but he paid nine million dollars of his own money so, yes, so that's know, why i'm so, saying but, but you see then, then you have to look at the spirituality and the psychology psychology of someone you know this this is an, an individual you know, as, as all performers, we just want to tell a story. We want to use our body, the, 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 the stage is our canvas and, and our body is, is, is the paintbrush and we just want to tell a story. Not necessarily a personal story. We just want to tell a story, pull the audience in so they live that story with us. And we want to be entertaining, right? So this is a performer, I think, that was very naive going into the music industry and was used and abused, Blinded by, by the Light, which is probably one of his most popular songs. And, um, and, and, it, and it ate him up, chewed him up and spit him out. So now this is kind of like ther therapy that he, he wants to speak out on this. Maybe so other, other future young performers don't fall into the same trap perhaps, but I, I think it was more like therapy for him. Um, plus, he could also use, you know, as dancers, they're not supposed to be in close proximity to each other. So he used the bandages of the surgery as a way to stop the, you know, to, to, to follow CDC guidelines. And he, yeah, I applaud him for using the entire, uh, uh, the entire football field became his stage, became his canvas, you know, so I applaud him for that. Um, you know, I, I'm just... Eh, you know, I, I, I just wanted, I, I would like to do away with the satanic rituals and I would like to kind of, you know, I, I agree that that story needs to be told, but he should have told it better. And if you can't let the whole world, no matter how old you are or how young you are, understand what this is. So people, people's monkey minds go crazy and they're, you can't let them think what they want to think. You have to make sure that they, they think they, they understand what you want to say, or they're going to put words in your mouth, and you're, as a performer, you're going to come out looking really bad, which you kind of did. If you can't do it correctly, then just be, just, just do a dance, just, just perform to the music, you know, because that's kind of what people need. Dance is an expression of happiness, and, and we, we need more dance and entertainment. We, pe people need to bring music back into their lives. They need to bring self-expression you know, and he had an opportunity to kind of lift up the spirits of anyone, you know, that, that was watching. And instead, he just put these people, especially the older people, in this mass confusion. And he sent the conspiracy people off the edge. And it was just like, you know, it, it, no one really understood it. And once that performance is done, your time is over. You well, I, I gotta, I gotta that. say, if, if, if indeed, because again, because you know this artist, you knew the backstory, and I love the way you, de you described that, that backstory and that performance. Again, I didn't see it, but regardless of, uh, I do feel I, and I, I have felt this for a while that, uh even though there are very clearly folks who are told what to perform and how to perform it because that happens that happened happen to me and right and so I, I i get that and i i absolutely uh but i also here in the last few years what i've been noticing and maybe it's a difference of my perspective my lens right because it feels to me like I'm seeing things in a little more of an expansive view. Yes, I can see where it would 
absolutely show some things in regards to conspiracy. And there are those who need to see those. Make no mistake about that. If it's still triggering one, then that's something for that person to look into. I feel like for me anyway, and this is why I decided to go ahead and, and have this conversation with you, even though I hadn't got to see it. Um, because I think all of these things are serving all of us on different levels in different ways. And you, your description there serves also a lot of different perspectives. You, you, you shared that there was a portion of it where all everyone looked the same. Mm -hmm. Well, there are several messages that I feel Source was conveying through this message uh, for both the artist himself in mm -hmm. oh, yeah. perhaps which way he was led and, and, and that he allowed himself to be led. And now he's correcting that, right? Because in the hall of mirrors, we all are going to enter a hall of mirrors where we see, and if, and, and that's what all of this is right now. It, the way I look at it, this is, we are so going to see what it is we have to see because it's time that's past time. And now it's gotten to from the sublime to the absolutely ridiculous so that those of us who still can't see are damn well going to see now. <laughs> Right. So so it serves a lot of different purposes. And 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 but I also feel source in in what you were describing in that. Wow. There was a lot being shown there in regards to conformity, too, because if we're all exactly the same. Well, yeah, there could be uh, plans afoot to make sure everybody's marching to the same. That's what I view a lot of the, you know. Uh, political correctness is actually, you know, speech police and all things like that, right? It's, it's very much that. So the, for me, I see where it serves uh, a lot of different purposes um, for, 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 you know, different folks. I'm going to check in with everybody here. We got 13 folks watching and thank you guys for, for joining us. Uh, today's rather impromptu chat. Uh, we, we, you know, had a different topic, but we want to wait, wait till our next time to get together for that, if that's all right. I'm, I'm glad we didn't actually talk about that, but I'd like to do that before we leave too. But you know, so, does anybody have any comments? Yeah, that's what I'm checking in on here. Uh, Revolutioneer has is sending uh, greetings and said that they had just recently watched the London Olympics open from 2012 to found that quite creepy. Uh, a lot of folks Seriously. did. I, I never want to watch it again. I mean, and yeah. I, I, know, I know how to protect myself from it. And, and it has no power over me anymore. No one enter, no one harvests my energy. If you try, you won't ever try. Well, that's the beauty. Again, you know, so I, 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 Honestly, can, I can watch what I want. I can watch what I want. I'm okay. Yeah, see, I'm like you. I feel exactly the same as you. Only I, I guess maybe I to, to some, it may appear as though I am protecting myself, but I actually don't feel I need protection from anything. And I've felt that way for a while because it's all me. It's all me. And I'm, I'm going to get back what I'm putting out. And so yeah. I, you know, so I'm not really, and, and anything that does show up is for me to figure out because that's yeah. what we're doing now. Well, you know, and the, the whole Super Bowl thing, and if there's a comment, you, you can just interrupt me. Um, it, it goes to being comfortable in your own skin, which is something that Sheila and I were, were talking about before we went live. And as a, you know, raised to be a professional dancer, you know, you are, your, your training is like martial arts, um, very strict. You do learn how to control your own mind. You, you do learn how not to take corrections from teachers personally, which really helps me now with, with my training and stuff. But the conformity is enormous because I had to weigh a certain amount. I, my measurements were taken twice a year. You, you, and because, you know, costumes are only made for skinny dancers. They aren't made for heavy dancers, you know, 
and I, I, I'm not big right now at all, but I could not fit into any of my old costumes. And I'm, I'm, I'm like, what size am I right now? I like a nine or a 10. Um, and, and I am too big, you know, you need to be up between a four at the very largest an eight. Oh my God. You know, <laughs> what the hell, you know, it, it's, it's crazy, but I, I was forced to look a certain way to, to act a certain way, to speak a certain way, um, you know, and otherwise I couldn't be a teacher. I wouldn't get the parts. And so it was very difficult, you know, eating disorders were all over the place. Um, I, I had an, an eating disorder for a while and it was all about conformity. And, and, and then, so, you know, what I have learned because I, I, it seems like I just left that in industry. I'm still healing from that, you know, cause I was in it my whole life, but you know, I, I left in 2008, right before my, my massive spiritual experience. And um, <laughs> I've never seen my natural color of my hair. Never. I mean, until now, because, you know, um, blonde is, is the preferred color most of the time in, in that, in that in, in industry. Absolutely no gray. Red, unless you're, unless you're playing the lead in The Little Mermaid. Uh, you know, red, red hair is, isn't, you know, you know, and, and, and they want you to be flat chested and a certain way. And, and if you're not flat, flat chested, you have to tape your boobs down and, you know, and all, all kind, which I had to do and I had to do all this stuff. So I have been coloring my hair since I was 14 and my mom supported it because I, I was not comfortable in my own skin. I, I was trying to be the, the, the perfect dancer because I wanted to be a rocket. And, and, and I would have been, except that, you know, I've talked about this before. I was just an inch too short. It was not in the cards for me. I had everything going for me. I definitely would have made it except, except you know, they, they even had lawyers looking into it for me, um, connected to the Rockets. Can, can we let her in? Can we, you know, somehow finagle away? And they said, oh gosh, no, you know, that, that would be the, the biggest scandal. And, and that would, you know, that, that would give me a bad name as a performer and would have really, right. really hurt my future career. I never would have gotten another audition after that. That was when I was 19. So, so I'm know. sure you can then appreciate the fact that for me, hearing all of these things from you, a lot of folks don't have that. We're not pretty. I, I was a singer. And so I know I know a little, I didn't perform, you know, as an adult, I only performed as an adolescent and, you know, connected to school and, and that sort of thing. I always wanted to, but I just didn't. And so I know the love of what you speak there, how, because I sing still, just not professionally. And so I know how it, it makes one feel, but some of these things that you're sharing that in order to participate at the level that you were. Uh, so a lot of things are not what they at all seem. And there's a lot of, like you said, you, you had to do in order to participate. And so a lot, I guess for me, it's just, I see, I can see both sides of what you're speaking on. And I, I wanted to share here before we got too far in, off of the actual Super Bowl, since I didn't see it. Um, some of the folks here are, are sharing something here. Um, Jennifer Brown said that it was a, a very interesting performance. Revolutionaire said transhumanism clones symbolism and ritual. Um, at Tiger, Amy said, then how do you explain the flashing of Satan against the back screen? Now, see, I, I, never, didn't see I, I never saw that. And, and, you know, you can do anything you want to video once, you know, once it's left the live performance, I saw it live. No, I, I never saw that. I, I saw I a brilliant light show. Um, you know, I, I have people I in my, you. in my family that, that own their own production uh, company. And so they, they, they are in the lighting and sound industry and, mm -hmm. and they, they, they were looking at the, everything that, that was on the back screen and the light, and the light show, um, that, that was never there. Oh, that was never well, there. Yeah, yeah, I didn't, I've, I've not no. seen the performance at all. Not yeah, one no, I mean, I, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you can see, I mean, you had to see it live. Um, 
I, I never saw that. I absolutely never saw that. It, it was a message to. about self acceptance, which basically, you know, no one, no one cares about being comfortable in their own skin. No one cares about performers that, that are forced to be something that they're not in their journey back to wholeness. Like, like, like what, what I success of, successfully went through, you know, no about that. They want to see Satan. They want to see the black magic. That's what gets everybody excited. And it gets, it gives them an adrenaline rush. This Super Bowl performance, there was no adrenaline rush in this. It was about this poor guy's experience as a performer that went sour and he thinks, I don't think he is, but you know, that, that's just my clairvoyant tuning into him, you know, about his coming out of it. And he's, he feels he's fine now. He's not, you know, I thought I was fine too. When, when I had the, my aha moment of what the industry did to me, you know, I thought it was fine too. And I'm still healing from it. You know, uh, I'm just now letting my natural hair color grow out after all those years of trying to be, I don't know, <laughs> you know, to, to, to something as a kid, you know, I, I was raised to be, um, but uh, it, it's just not, it's not, it's not newsworthy. So they have to say there's Satan in the background. They have to add this and they have to add that because it was from most perspectives, if you didn't understand the backstory, and I guess if you haven't been through something like that, like I felt like I was, I didn't, I never had plastic surgery. That was never suggested to me, but the hair color was suggested. The weight loss was suggested, you know, um, having to have my hair long. And I love long hair, but it, it had to be long to pull up in the ballet bun and to wear in different styles, stuff like that. And I did cut my hair to be re re rebellious. And, and I thought my teacher was good at crap her pants, but she supported me only because I donated it. But then I had to buy a fake hair to, to <laughs> just like still had to look like I had a whole bunch of hair. So anyway, because I went through that at a minor level compared to what this man went through, I got it. And it has nothing to do with Satan, except your inner Satan, your inner demons. They were saying the, the, the color red is, is connected to Satanism. No, it's connected to fire. And, you know, the, the fire is connected to, they have the little flamey man with the pitchfork, which is Satan, which is stupid to think that that's a whole other conversation we can go on with the history of satan and lucifer i know it very well you know anger is connected to the liver which is very fiery which is bile and that's how throughout mythology satan is a little red man that's connected to the fire element and he's angry and that's connected to the liver and he has a pitchfork which is more like a trident you know which is also kind of connected to the age of pisces it's, i mean you know and, and and it's absolutely harmless the only satan that we have really is the Satan inside of ourselves, is our, our negative emotions. Um, are, are, is there black magic and, and dark entities? Yeah, there, there is that, but you know, flame and Satan on the background, that, that is a stupid, I, I'm sorry. If, if, if you wanna put out a black magic message, you're not gonna use Satan because pe people who do black magic don't use Satan. Um, Satanists use Satan and they're idiots. They, they, they don't even, they don't even know the correct way to do black magic. A, a Satanist does not. They, they have not studied the dark arts. You know, a, a true black magician does not use Satan. They just don't. They, they, they think it's stupid. They, they don't want to be connected with that. And, you know, and, and I studied this for years and years and years. But anyway, the message is, you know, self-worth, which we're going to do in our next show more deeply. But, you know, how comfortable are you in your own skin? How afraid of you? Are, are, are these things, you know, where did, did, did you watch the Super Bowl um, uh, ceremony and or, or halftime show? And were you afraid? If you were, you need to look into that. You're not comfortable in your own skin. Yeah. Be before we leave that, that very specific portion and what, what you just shared, I want to say that uh, I want to put this down too. I really, I've got, I've got to make sure I go back and, and put these links in. You know, we spoke in regards to uh, conformity, and and you spoke to hypnosis earlier. I'm going to put in uh, a, a link to a Darren Brown video. He's great. Uh, he took a, a subject and walked through how exactly he sees that Sirhan Sirhan was programmed using hypnosis, 
and oh, therefore yeah. proved exactly what you were saying. So I'll be putting that in. It's about an hour show. Um, also, to your point in regards to Satan, Lucifer, that whole thing, I'm going to put in a scene that has been was deleted from the movie Dogma because I think it really, really, really tells what I feel is so. And I'm also going to be putting a link to Sophia Love's book, The Imposter, uh, which actually for me uh, is pulls all of this together. And, you know, for me anyway, as to what I have always long suspected that all of these are the same being and they really are a being and they really do exist. Um, but it's not the being you think. No, so, I've, I've they, written a lot of articles on Lucifer and the Lucifer and, and, and you know, and, and I hate the word Luciferian that just, mm, you want to, well, you wanna, there you know, is a, and, I, but anyway, they're, they're very controversial. Right. Um, you know, and, and well, I, I will I, say I this: I, up, I, I back it up with science, and I back it up with with research and and correct mythology, and you know, I will say this: a lot I, of people angry. No, it does. You're right, and I. But I will say this, and this is uh, for for me um, <laughs> goes to the heart and the core of it. It's again one of the reasons why for me the truther portion of 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 the collective we and the spiritual portion of the collective we just like everything else there it will be there is a holing process because i have for some time now i i do feel very strongly that there are those out there that we even refer to as dark magicians who really just were under a different kind of programming and conditioning than we were. There's all sorts of it, by the way, there's layers and uh, yeah. levels and depends on what, uh, you know, DNA you're born into and how all of these things as to how and what, and all of these things as to what we get or don't get as far as programming and conditioning are concerned. And there are those most notably, and, and what can be seen most readily at this point, I refer to as a, a globalist. Uh, yes, it is a cabal, sort of, so to speak. There are those in it that do know or feel and were programmed in these certain ways and they do use these sorts of rituals. I see that very clearly. Um, I, again, because I didn't see what you saw, I, I suspect, and of course, from your perspective, you, it's not triggering you. And so absolutely, I, I, I see, sense, and feel why this, but I also see that if it does trigger someone else, if they do see it, just what you were saying, work through that. Mm -hmm. it, it has no power over me. Right. It does, however, have, and this is where for me and for a lot of folks, those who are going along, not paying attention to their own energy, what it's be, that it is being harvested and directed and used in certain manners and ways. Um, you know, again, each one has to see things for themselves. And, you know, whether or not this was or not, none of us really have a, a clear answer on that because we don't know the ins and outs. And apparently this performer didn't really do a great job of. I know. And that kind of makes me sad because he could have reached out and helped people with a global message of be comfortable in your own freaking skin, you know. Which no matter what or how it was, if if one can be open to seeing it from the different levels, all of them, from that conspiracy type level right up to where you can see it and see that it is a reflection of ourselves in some way. Yeah, because it's not getting out there if it wasn't thought up in here by one among us in some sort of way. 
And if it triggers us in any sort of way, by the way, doesn't matter what, how, how it, it triggers for me anyway, I want to see, I want to get to the bottom of why I feel triggered about something. Exactly. Has nothing. Exactly. And for me, you know, I am because of COVID growing out, this is my real hair color. You know, this, this is kind of it, but you know, I, I used to have blonde highlights put in and I never had my whole hair, hair cut color for some time. I just had highlights. It has, you know, encouraged me more that when I finally feel comfortable, because my, my area is kind of bad for COVID, when I feel comfortable going to my salon, I think I'm just going to um, either tell her, let it all grow out or, you know, do your best to just kind of match it and just go to my own. And I don't have, you know, it's just dark. I just like it. There's, I don't know. I've never seen it before and, and I'm more comfortable on my own skin and I just, I just want to be me. But talking about things that trigger you, and I have to admit this, and Tiger is going to laugh at me, but I, my, I have been watching this series um, called Stranger Things, and, I, and it's a very popular series, and um, I got triggered on Sunday, uh, Super Bowl day. I, you know, I watched three episodes in a row, and I, I was already halfway through the, the first season. And it, it's about, um, you know, this, this portal that is open to the, the negative astral, which I have had personal experiences in and horrifying experiences. And then it, it goes, it, and it has this monster in there and it reminds me of the Montauk monster, if anyone knows the history of that. Um, I do, I, I've studied that very deeply. So I know all the history of that. So that, that, that triggered me. And then it has um, uh, MK Ultra all over it, and so and I have personal experience with that. Not that I was a victim; I've never been a, a, a victim of that. Um, but I know people that, that have been close to me that were victims of that. And um, the, the the worst one was my best friend in high in high school. Still, still one of my, my best friends. Her husband was trained to be a super soldier. And she contacted me because she, she knew I was woo woo and she knew my spiritual background and just wanted to know why, why the heck was her husband acting these ways and had these memories. And he's like, she's like, Lisa, this can't, this can't be true. Please tell me this is not true. And I, I was just crying and I had to tell her, I'm like, no, Lisa. And she, you know, she ended up getting a divorce. I said, it's all true. And I said, he's only scratching the bit of the surface and I kind of filled her in and she's like there's there's nothing that you can say at this point that's going to scare me and and I was right you know and she's like there's things I could tell you that I'm not going to tell you because I I don't want to ruin you the way they ruined me so even the things that she told me were were horrifying so I'm watching Stranger Things and it's about you know MK Ultra and it triggered me I basically got no sleep on Sunday at night I, I just I, I was laying there in fear I even told my teacher the next day you know, I was scared and this is why I was scared I felt I was from head to freaking toe covered in um MK Ultra Montauk energy black magic of the highest degree Oh my gosh. And I felt completely connected from bond. I wasn't able to contact my guides. I was not able to, to contact my, my protectors. And, and so the next morning I'm like, this, this, this has got to stop. So I, I did a long, long practice, which kind of like washed all that energy off of me. And then I'm like, okay, I feel great now. I'm never going to watch it again. And then I got to thinking, oh, hells no. I want to be able to watch whatever I want to watch. You know, this, this brought up a lot of bad memories for me and it brought up a lot of bad experiences that I had, especially from 2008 on. Plus it brought back bad past, we'll just call them past life met memories prior to, to 2008. And I'm like, you know what? Mm -mm, this triggered me for a reason. And I, the theme, then I saw the Super Bowl theme of being comfortable in your own skin. And here I was not comfortable in my own skin. And so by, by Tuesday, I said, oh, no, no, no. I said, I was triggered for a reason. I'm going to look at this dead in the eye. I'm going to work on it. And I'm going to watch Stranger Things. And every time it triggers me, I'm going to get stronger from it. And I'm going to look her and I'm not going to. That, that's about the only thing that really has power over me anymore is like the MK Ultra, the Montauk. The, the scary portals to the astral, which everyone truly thinks is all make-believe and is woo-woo, I know from personal experience it's not. 
And so it's that stuff, you know, like even watching Harry Potter, it, Harry Potter used to freak me out because it reminded me of the stuff I went through and um, I'm not doing that anymore. You know, my, the, the theme of 2021 needs to be, be comfortable in your own skin. When you're triggered, look at it. You think it's satanic, why do you think it's satanic? And I don't care if it is. If it is, why is it bothering you? Why does it have that kind of control? Why are you giving it permission to make you angry and scared and run away? And so that's that's what I'm doing right now. So I just gave a big old confession. <laughs> Well, no, I listen. I love it. I that that you, uh, you know, that you are um, taking ownership of mm -hmm. your energy. You recognized when uh, something was, uh, you know, uh, not going well for yourself and triggered triggered you, and you looked it right in the eye. And that's the important thing, right there. So yeah, so and it wasn't like it wasn't harvesting energy from me. It took nothing from me. It didn't attack me. It was my own stuff. It was my own issues. It was my own past experiences that made my monkey mind just go, and you know, just I went to crazy town, um, you know, and, and wasted a night's sleep laying there in, in, in fear. And I, I just prayed and chanted mantras and just did whatever I could do just to survive the night until I could finally get up in the morning. It felt like getting up in the morning to do my practices and just like, just get, just, you know, banish this, this energy from my body. But, you know, I, I, my goal is I want to be able to watch stranger things because I like it because I do have this personal connection to it. I, I love it. I, I think it's so cool that this too bad people don't, don't believe all that stuff that's true because it is true. I mean, there, there was nothing in there that I have found is not true uh, from my experience, you know? So I really like it and I want to be able to watch it and not have to, to, you know, feel like I'm so dirty with this this dark energy that I, I need, you know, like no bath. I felt like no bath is ever going to clean this crap off of me. That's why I did such a long practice, you know? Uh, 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 uh. I, I, I want to be able to watch it and be comfortable in my own skin and just be fine. And I, I, well, I think it, it's going to take me a while, but I'll get yeah. there. For me, taking a look at anything that triggers me, for me, not for anyone else. I, you know, listen, I, I, I love everyone who's here, uh, you know, partaking in all of these conversations. I really do. And I appreciate everyone watching, but I've never, ever held it as anything other than uh, participation in my own growth, because that's really what this is, is, mm -hmm. is looking at things for myself. And I encourage everyone to do it. Right. I mean, it doesn't really matter what either one of us, you or I think uh, took place on Sunday. Clearly some very important things took place on Sunday for you personally. Mm -hmm. And the fact that you were a willing to not run in the other direction, look at it in the eye, see, ask yourself some questions, working through it and directing your own discernment, your own energy, your own intention, attention, focus, all of these things. These, this is, this is where the rubber meets the road for us, regardless mm -hmm. of what, because I, I look at it like this, there, uh, there is absolutely the possibility in my mind, Lisa, that the artist, you felt his intentions of to speak his story. So that is a truth. And it was not from his perspective, because you were seeing it from his perspective, it was not in any way, shape or form satanic for you. There are others who saw that very same thing, who see, sense, and feel a satanic involvement. Your truth does not negate theirs. Mm -hmm. This is why for me, it, we have to pull what has otherwise known as the woo-woo into reality because those two things, are, I feel, again, I didn't get to see it, but I feel it can be both things at once. Mm -hmm. It could have been uh, we don't know we weren't there we weren't in the room we don't know how it was all decided that this was going to go down 
perhaps there wasn't a pre-story given so exactly what would happen would happen it is could possible be. uh yeah it could be you know and it and you know like if this is pink this is a pink heart for valentine's day and i'm wearing pink today let's say i'm the artist that drew this pink i can tell people this is pink my intention i am the creator this is pink there will still people say that is black magic that is witchcraft and get that away from me because it's voodoo it doesn't either and there and there's no way you can convince people like that of that if you know when someone falls into that category why are you what the hell you know what 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 is triggering you to be like that why why is everything that they see this theme whether it's satanic or, or or whatever it is there's a reason for that just like with me being freaked out by by stranger things there's a reason for that you know instead of just blaming it on the outside world not saying that the outside world is wrong because with strange stranger things that out that that outside show is correct but i don't care about that why is it triggering me it is the issue so you know I, I, I started to find myself constantly thinking about Montauk after that, constantly thinking about MK Ultra and, and oh my gosh, is that, and, and, and that they're, you know, for, you know, for a good part of Monday, everything was out to get me. And I'm like, no, 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 not going down that rabbit hole. You know, this is ridiculous. Where's my training? Where's, where, where's my training? Where's the master of my mind? Why is this happening to me? So if someone's always seeing the devil or Satan everywhere, it's this and it's this Luciferian and it's this and it, why, why? They, they need to go within and figure that out, you know, because yeah, there, there are some people, no matter what you tell them, they, their filter, their, their perception is this, and that's how they're going to see it and experience it, which kind of makes me sad because he, he, he helped those people, you know, by not giving the background story, he gave everybody the permission to interpret this crazy performance. Because in my opinion, it was Kate. I understand, I love his journey. I have respect for him as an artist, but I can also be a performance critique. While I thought it was a brilliant display of his journey from an outsider, non-performer, non-familiar with the artist point of view it was chaos it was chaos and they it, it, you know yeah you know it, it, this it, it, it could have been viewed as very creepy with these people with the bandages and they're all being the same and they're in red and white and there's this blinding light and he's in the hall of mirrors yeah i could get that well see that's why i that's why i feel very strongly myself again i preface this by saying i have not seen it but i I have in the last three years become intimately aware with seeing things. Um, <laughs> this is under, it is an underlying energetic. And I, I, you know, again, you're seeing it from a very, very unique perspective. We all are because our each perspective is unique. And so it's going, for me, it's going to be where I am in my journey as to how I'm seeing it play out. And right now, from the standpoint of not having seen it, but just knowing that that has always historically been an opportunity for ritualistic mm -hmm. uh, magic rituals yeah. to be performed. Yeah. I don't, ab I absolutely don't doubt that on some level there was some of that being done. And I will say it too, that it is in these moments still apparently required. And part of that is for me, there are things that all of us have not allowed ourselves to see, sense, and feel yet. And until we do, they are going to continue to present themselves 
in the collective for us all to see, sense, okay. and feel. I, I really do feel like this is so because you already know that that is there. And so that particular thing doesn't really trigger you anymore. And you don't really see it anymore because it is a background. There are those who haven't recognized what is being done with their reality yet. And again, the fact that, you know, everything that took place with Montauk, just what you're saying there, you know, there's folks that hear that and say, oh, well, that's just, you know, woo woo and not real and not true and all of these things. So <laughs> things have to do, apparently get to the point where they're so in some faces that there is absolutely no doubt. And so like you said, you know, someone who hasn't give a whit for the conspiracies, have, hasn't give a whit for what actually is taking place in some of these larger ceremonies where millions of energy is being poured into that particular ritual because of the way I see it, that's exactly what it is, having been a bit of a performer myself as well, and knowing what all of that energy being directed right at you feels like, I'm sorry, I, I, I know what, what's going on there. I know it's an energy harvesting mechanism. All performances are. I just now know that and admit it to myself. That's part of what I get from doing this, by the way is we are all live and interactive here. So it's the same thing, just a different level for me personally, right? Well, I, I have to say, you know, I, I know black magic. I know the symbolism. I know the sigils, um, you know, you, you, you can't fight something unless you don't understand it. You haven't experienced it. So I've done that. I served my time. I've experienced it and, and I fight you it. You just didn't it. see any in this one. No. And, you know, and I'm very, very good with that, 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 you know, to, to say that you are an expert in something that, that's, you know, like I have experiences with black magic. I've been attacked by it. I have, I have studied it so I can fight against it so I can transmute it so I can subdue it. Um, you know, and so I'm very sensitive to it. And, and I still am programmed that every Super Bowl, every big event, I look for it. Um, I just do. I, I just want to know what is the other side up to? Or are they still just doing the same old crap? So I, I do look for it. I found nothing panky panky black magic for the first time in this Super Bowl. Um, when Bruno Mars did the, the, the Super Bowl halftime, I didn't feel it in his either. Um, you know, and, and, and if, if there was something in this one, um, I didn't see it. And from someone who studied it, you know, if, if I would have seen it, I, I would, I would have called it out. Right. And if, if it's that subtle that I didn't even see it, then. Well, perhaps that's why he had to spend his own money to do it. I mean, I don't know. Be, I'm just saying, be, you know, anything and anything and everything. I looked, I looked hard because I, I, you know, that, I guess that's just my training. I, I want to know what, 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 what kind of weird crap in the pool? You know, I still, I'm interested. It's like, you know, I'm with my, my popcorn, you know, and I'm just kind of interested. What, what are they up to? Because they usually will show it. And here's another thing that I'm not trying to scare people with this. Okay, I'm not trying to scare people with this, but we are going to see less of that activity out in the open. Um, and it is going to die down because this the energy that we're currently in right now is a great big mirror and you know um and, and it's very productive to help having people raise their consciousness and raise the, the vibration of the body so the, the you know you can say dark dark magicians are not stupid they're they're quite intelligent and they know this so public displays are going to start to go away and it will give people a false sense of security you know because I, as i have said before 
this real battle between dark and light, which they need to become friends and shake hands and give hugs and kisses and become gray, takes place in a realm that most people can't see and, and don't participate in. And, um, you know, and so these, these black magicians have tried for centuries to try to, manip to, to manipulate the physical energy and to stop what happened in 2020 from occurring and it didn't work. So their, their control over the physical world is lessening. Where they are experts is in the astral and the etheric, you know, and so they are going to regroup and they are gonna leave the physical and, and then they're gonna put all of their um, focus in, in the astral and the etheric, which is what I feel shifting. And it will give people a false sense of security for those that don't have eyes to see and ears to hear and access to those other realms. They will be completely in the dark. They will not know what's going on, which can be a little unnerving, you know, which is why um, Stranger Things kind of scared the bejeebies out of me, <laughs> you know? <laughs> right. Well, you know, I have my own experience with uh, <laughs> with Stranger Things. Yeah. Have you uh, seen it? Yeah, I have. Okay. And I, I had my own experience with it. I've talked about it uh, before and it's, it's a little different from yours, but I, I, and I don't have any cognizant memories of, of, you know, being exposed to any MK ultra. Um, although I, I know, I know that I was in line to be groomed for it. So whether or not it has happened and it hasn't ever, it just didn't kick in or what, I don't know, uh, you know, maybe it didn't, my, my, my mother, may have been successful in removing us from, from that situation. Um, I hope, I, you know, like I said, I don't, I don't know. Uh, uh, but I, do, I have had my own experience with that, that sort of thing. So what I wanted to say in regards to what you just said, for me personally, what I see, first of all, the energetic that is very underlying and prevalent right now and for me, what I see, sense, and feel is the sovereignty, the accountability, the liability, the free, the underlying energetics of what Aquarius actually is. We're not, not all of the planets are in Aquarius yet, so we are still moving in that direction. But Aquarius is all about that freedom, liberty, uh, self accountability, self reliability, um, and so the energetics of that are going to do nothing but continue to grow. And so mm -hmm. the types of rituals and things as those of us who, who are coming into the knowledge that the woo-woo is the, I, I really hate that term and I don't know what else to do. We have to bring that into reality it is a very real what we do with our energy what we do with our thoughts what we do with our emotions with our prayers with our actions all of these things are what we're speaking on it is it just is a fact it's not woo woo it's no. a fact and as these as those of us who know that and wake up to the truth of who we are and pull more of us into ourselves. And we can see, sense and feel these things, those sorts of energetics lessen and less because they're, the reason they're not working is because you and I are becoming in charge of our own energetic and not allowing it to be directed right. by something else. That's another reason those things don't work anymore. Exactly. If someone wants freedom, which is what the age of Aquarius is about, that has nothing to do with the outside world. It yeah. is freedom from your monkey mind. It is freedom from being triggered into anger, into hate, into jealousy, into pride, these, these, these negative poisons. Yeah. That is true freedom, you know, and it's being the eye of the hurricane when the rest of the world is in chaos. You know, that is that that's the true sense of freedom. It has nothing to do with I have the freedom to never wear a mask again, or I have the freedom to, to choose which vaccine I want or have the freedom to choose. I don't want a vaccine. 
that is not real freedom. Real freedom is freedom from the monkey mind. That's that, and that is what the age of Aquarius is. And that's what people are, whether you, you, you go willingly or now you go kicking and screaming, which is how most people are going. People will learn eventually through lifetimes to master their own mind or they can't incarnate here anymore. They won't be able to handle it. They, they will not be able to handle this, this transition, especially in the next hundred years. It's going to get crazy. The show is just beginning. And the woo-woo, like I said, and I probably will not have proof of this because I won't live long enough. But, you know, the seeing what the dark is doing, you know, they, they have always had a contract prior to 2021. Um, you know, in this, and anyone who has studied the Illuminati or the Cabal or whatever name you want, want to call it, or the Black Magicians, the one code of ethic that they have is they, they announce what they're going to do before they do it. That doesn't apply anymore, folks. That does not apply anymore, which is one reason why that they will, you know, their, their activities will leave the physical because they don't have to give a song and dance. This is what we're doing. And here's our black magic. And we're going to show the upside down pentagram or we're going to swing the, the upside down cross or we're going to throw all this negative symbology at you guys. And, and now, now you kind of know it's coming. That's going away. And that's when this, you know, all, all of those activities because they too are going to go kicking and screaming. They have to become gray. They have to merge with the light and they're going to fight it more than the white, white side will. It will move into the astral and the etheric. And, you know, and that, that's, that's where the real battle is going to be because they don't have to announce anymore what their plans are. They can go completely stealthy. And, and so basically, you know, you know, as in, in the next hundred years before we finally make that shift into the golden age where enough of us master our mind, that's what stops all this. That's what stops all the nonsense. Humanity won't see things coming. You, you will have to master your mind. You will have to develop your clairvoyant abilities. You will have to de develop uh, telekinesis, all of these woohoo abilities that are built into our central nervous system. You have to develop the abilities that yogis have been doing in caves for thousands and thousands of years to know what is going on and that it, you know spirituality will be necessary for survival if you want to know what's going on with with you know the other side what what are their plans because they're not going to announce it anymore those days are ending and you're the first to actually bring that forward for that yeah event. i don't usually talk about that stuff but i think it needs to be brought out in the open no, I mean, you're the first I've heard speak on the fact that they will no longer uh, be required. to. No, not. We're, we're, we have started a new galactic year, and this is what people don't understand. This has never been done before. Before well, I do know we're in new energy where you're right about the that. Previous, mm -hmm. All the previous galactic years, you know, they they were like we were kind of like stuck in this repetitive uh, cycle. And so each golden year or each golden age was almost like a repeat of the other one, just a little bit lower. So all these contracts, you know, these, these agreements that, you know, light and dark have agreements with each other. All, they're all playing a role. And, and, and we've fallen too much into that identity, which is why we have to drop the duality and become great to truly be in our new golden age, the, the, the age of Maitreya. Um, you know, but yeah, I, I, I've, I've heard that from whistleblowers for uh, 10, 15, 20 years, how they have all said the exact same thing. And they, they were ones that, that didn't work on the dark side and the etheric. They worked on the dark side and the etheric and in the physical and were initiated in, into the Illuminati and these, in these different or these secret organizations from birth. So, and then they, they finally broke out as adults. They all say the exact same thing, you know, they, and they, and they have these weird cards that they use. There's all kinds of methods that, that they use, not, not just TV and things to actually say this, this is what's going down. This, this is what we're trying to do to stop what just happened in 2020 and it didn't work. So now we're, we're, we're in a whole new ball game. There are no agreements. There are no rules. There are no rules. Just let me say that again. There are yeah, no, no I, let me just say this. <laughs> for, now, either side, for either side. <laughs> yeah. 
See that part, I I, I do feel, I, I feel, I, I can feel that that's true. I've su suspected that for a while. A lot of, uh, we actually have had a couple of conversations in the past about, well, you know, there's been a lot of things said about this being a prison planet and all of those sorts of things, right? And I've suspected that the cell doors have been open for some time now, mm -hmm. but we're all so programmed and conditioned. A, you know, you, when you go to open the door and it doesn't open after, you know, eons, you stop trying to open the door. Right. And you forget about there even being a door to get out. You just know you're trapped. So, so for me, part of that awakening of waking up to the truth of who I am is also uh, now calling uh, what I've suspected, exactly what you've said, that there are no rules, that we are making all new rules and agreements this is why, for me personally, my focus and attention is precious currency that I choose how to wield it, what, where to put it, and what to focus on. Because to me, again, you know, we've talked a lot about dark magicians in this one, as opposed to white magicians. For me, I, I actually see it in a different way. I see that as a breakdown of an energetic, a truth for me is that we are magic. These are our abilities and we, uh, everyone has them all. We just haven't developed them and we don't believe even really that it is all our focus and attention. You speak on it as monkey mind. I just say focus and attention because the focus and attention is everything it's everything it's everything i say it's everything i do it's everything i think it's every everything and so you're right M mastering that coming to grips with that mm -hmm. being able to discern in those sorts of ways i the magic is who and what we are if we wield it in this way we're dark if we wield it in this way we are light okay you're right there. It's time now for this holding process to come this Trinity situation where it's neither light nor dark. It is that gray, that combination, a, a third thing, a new thing where we are all operating from the truth of who we are. Exactly. And, you know, you said prison planet. Yeah. That's what a lot of people have used that terminology. Because I don't enjoy walk, talking about this all the time, but after my, my walk-in, my, my spiritual experience in 2008, I felt trapped. I felt trapped here. I was like, what the heck is going on in this planet? I know it's been a while since I've been here. I felt trapped. And I'd never heard the word prison planet before. I, I was a newbie to the, you know, I, I didn't know that, that these conspiracy theories back then, but I felt like I was in a prison. I, I felt trapped. And I, I, I felt trapped in this body, but I also felt that there was this um, thing around the firmament that there was just something there that was that was messing with the reincarnation cycle, um, and it was negative. And so, you know, that that took me down a big rabbit hole and through I actually did, you know, through being in the astral and, and through studying all the studies I studied that yes. You know, and, and I even found it in, in the Bardo, which is what um, Catholics call purgatory, which is where you go after you die before you go to your next incarnation. I, I have, you know, there, there's negative Bardo beings there. There's things, that, you know, not, I, I'm not going to go into a whole teaching on that, but it's there. Um, and now, not as much anymore. And, and that is because we are in the age of Aquarius, where it is freedom. You know, so, you know, yeah, it's, it's like the, the, the gates have been opened. There, there is nothing stopping any person on this planet right now from total liberation, total freedom, which, you know, I'm going to bring in, I'm going to bring in the spiritual. It is rainbow body. It, you know, that's what you're here to do. Loving, compassionate, genuine human being, obtain rainbow body. You never have to reincarnate anywhere ever again if you don't want to. Total freedom. 
that's what that is. So, you know, this planet is no longer a prison planet. It, it is open to every single person. You know, these, these dark magicians that will eventually, we will all be gray and we will all be working on the same side. And that, you know, 100 years, that's not a long time, people. Yeah. My friends, that is not a long time. We are on the cusp of that happening. They, 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 there is no interference with you obtaining personal freedom, which is rainbow body. Um, I, I, it's, it's like a breath of fresh air for me. I can feel that. So the prison is our mind. The prison mm -hmm. is this body, you know, transcending the physical, transcending the, the, the negative emotions, which is only done with spiritual practice. There, there is no other way. Maybe, maybe two or 300 years from now, we'll be born with better equipment, you know, and, and then, you know, we won't have to practice as much practice will be a lifestyle where right now it's not. You have to put effort into anything to, to really be able to pick that fruit. So I love the word prison planet because it, this 100%, I don't care if they, people think I'm crazy, prior to 2021 coming in, it was a prison planet. It was a prison planet. And, and it, you know, it just made me so frustrated as I studied Rainbow Body and I could see what was going on in these other realms and everything I'm learning and everything I'm learning in Bond. And I'm like, you know what, this is not, equal opportunity right now this is some people you just don't teachings are blocked this is blocked yes it's negative karma but a lot of negative karma was created uh, you know coerced or was you know it, it just wasn't correct that's gone well let's see uh so jennifer said she too had to she had to stop watching stranger things because it certainly was triggering and bringing up oh thanks for her <laughs> Um, yeah, but I wanted to I wanted to back up too because Jennifer also said that she, she felt similar to what I did that perhaps well, again I haven't seen it but she did she said that's interesting I did feel a little darkness but not from him it was the mass of sameness in all the beings in the choreography so yeah. I. That's perhaps I intuited you know and that's what was happening to him and that shouldn't happen to anybody that sh that's sh that's not entertainment no and but it has happened before everyone remembers oh. that prince went through something very similar and mm -hmm. actually painted the words slave on his oh. face yeah at one point so yeah I uh, when I, when I was dancing I felt I wasn't dancing. I mean, I, I love dancing was such a freedom of expression for me and to be anything I wanted to be and just to be something different other than Lisa, Lisa Berry, Lisa Rising at the time, you know, well, I was Lisa Rising and Lisa Berry as a performer, you know, and it was just so amazing. And I, I just, you know, I, I longed to be back on stage the minute I got off and it was like an addiction because I wasn't comfortable in my own skin. That is not entertainment, you know, and that is what, you know, it, it needs to change because when, when entertainers change, you know, then when you're performing, you're giving out a different energy to the, what people are watching, you know? So I, I contributed to, you know, screwing up people basically because you know the, the only time I felt that I performed for myself was I had an astral experience on stage and I, I was in we, we turned a little mermaid into a ballet and I was not tall enough to, to get to, to get the lead of Ariel I, I and, and the prince was not the, the the second lead because we didn't have enough good male dancers to be that I got to play the part of Sebastian so I actually got an equal lead as, as Ariel. And so, and that, that, that is a very dark Disney movie. Um, it is loaded with black magic, Little Mermaid. I, I understand all the symbolism. I still love it, but it is, you know, so literally when we were on stage and there's this part where um, the, the, the evil witch is taking the voice of Ariel. I was right next to the Ariel character and, and the witch who played the part in, in our ballet. It was fabulous. Oh my God. All of a sudden, and I was not the only one that experienced this, the lighting changed on stage. We could not see the audience anymore. 
we couldn't hear any rustling in the audience anymore. It was like this black thing just completely covered. And we were alone on the stage. We couldn't see off into the wings. Anyone who knows the wings, it's like where, where you come on and off. We couldn't see off into the wings. And, and so I'm like, holy, you know, and I'm like, okay, I know I'm clairvoyant. No, no one else is experiencing this, right? So then there was this one part I had to run over to um, the, the fish, what, what, whatever the, the, the fish's name in um, Little Mermaid. I had to run over and I, and I had to look really scared and I grabbed Stephanie and Stephanie was shaking and she's like, Lisa, what the fuck is going on? And I, and I go, and, and you were not supposed to talk on stage, but I'm like, I don't know, just keep staying character. I don't know. I don't know what's going on with the lighting. I don't know what, I, I don't understand what tech, I, I don't know, just go with it, just go with it. And we're all looking at, at, at each other and we're literally terrified on stage, but we were supposed to be, cause that was the scene. So, and then, so that section of the ballet ended. For once, I actually felt like I was performing for myself. And we went off stage and everyone was like, did you just feel what I felt? And, I, and, and I, I'm just kind of like, I'm not saying anything because they're just going to make fun of the girl who sees ghosts because they all knew that, that I was clairvoyant. They, they used to pickle me, you know, they, they, they were my sisters and they, and they, 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 they harassed me a lot. And I'm just kind of sitting back and they're like, that, that was not a performance. That was real. What happened? Why did we lose contact? That that is not right. I want to complain to the technical manager. I want to complain to Joellen. You know, I I never want to. And th then then we were like, oh my God, that was the best performance we've ever given. We literally were living in that. That we were it, something freaky woo woo happened. And then um, after that, I knew that was going to be my last performance. I that experience just broke me and made me comfortable in my own skin. And I don't understand how this happened, but I didn't want to conform anymore. I didn't want to play this game anymore. And, and, and I was, it was pretty emotional. And I knew that that was going to be my last successful time on stage. And it was. And so for me, you know, um, that's, that's what broke the, the spell for me, but it had to be something that I understood, which was a national experience, which everyone, everyone saw it. And all the, and unfortunately it was the dress rehearsal. It was not the real performance, but you know, there, there was a lot of people that, that from other studios and all those other places would come and watch our dress rehearsals because you can kind of get in if you know how to get in. They were floored by the performance. I mean, and John was like, oh my God, you guys got to do that exact same thing again. And we're just like, that's never going to happen again. <laughs> and it didn't. <laughs> but, you know, well, that's, that's, that's just an example of. We well, were. and I, but see, I think what you described there ha will happen for each in some ways, right? That, that, that's why I, I think so, it's, it's, you know. <clears throat> well, that's why I feel like it can be truth. It can be truth uh, and false at the same time, going back to what we spoke on in regards to, you know, this thing with the Super Bowl. And I, I feel I see where it serves purposes for each because we are all, each of us, so unique. Uh, <clears throat> there is no other. That is part of the, the whole the whole point, uh, your your description going back to your cup was a perfect example too, right? Yeah. Of how what is for one is not for the other, and it, it's not meant to be. And it's only when we try to pigeonhole everything has to be in this. This is, and it is for you, but it may not be for other. And right. I, I feel what, what you were saying and I, I get it and I don't, I, I, but I also see, again, like I said, I, I didn't see that one in particular, but there, I, I do see too though, where things have to, because there is so much still and yet that is right out there in the faces of folks. And yet they still are unable to, for whatever the reason, see it, sense it, feel it, know it for themselves. Even though the truth, what you would think of as the truth, hard, 
cold, scientific, mathematic numbers. All of these things are there, and yet there are still those who, 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 who haven't been able to see that since it feel it for themselves in any way, shape, or form. And it, 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 for me, it, it flows across all of those things, and each will find their way. Another reason why it's so important that what you were sharing there in regards to how you were feeling there towards the end before you stopped doing that. This is why I feel it's so important for each to follow what makes their heart sing, because that is the new rule of the day. <laughs> that is what we're, in my view anyway, what I'm here to experience is the truth of who I am, that I have always been a creator being, that I allowed my energy to be usurped and used and directed in however ways or whatever ways uh, I allowed in the, in the past. I'm, I'm in the process of seeing my own pro, uh, programming and conditioning and coming to the way I wish to remove it and replace it with something else. And part of it is something that you've been doing with me. And uh, I, I, if you don't mind, before we end, well, I want to- Before we go to that, I want to bring up one more example of okay. a performer taken wrong. And I'm going to put this on my YouTube, or not on my, I'm not going to put it on my YouTube. I'm going to put it on my Facebook page today. But there, my, my favorite bad boy of ballet, and his, he's Russian, I cannot pronounce his name. So don't, don't ask me to. But he, he put out this video years ago called Take Me to Church. And it's about being a, a sacrifice and all this. And, and so he, he's the bad boy of ballet because then he, like me, just decided, well, he didn't leave the in industry like I, I did, but he decided I'm not going to conform anymore. I, I want to be comfortable in my own skin. I want to be my own person. I want my freedom of expression. And, and he left the professional ballet company, which he was at the top of his game and, and opened up his, his own. And he gave this performance where he had no shirt on, which is a no-no in ballet. And he was showing his tattoos, another no-no in any performance. If, if, and any of my friends that had tattoos, they had to heavily have, have them covered because that, that was, you know, you just weren't allowed to have any of that stuff. And he had just on his ballet tights and uh, a cup and, and, and they, they were shredded and ripped. And, and so it was about his personal journey. Same thing as what this, this guy is talking about and him breaking out of it. And he's like doing all this, you know, this, this crazy choreography. There were people who looked at that and said that it was satanic and that he is possessed by the devil and he was on drugs. And that it just was, <laughs> maybe they never used drugs, but that was not the point of that whole performance. But if you, you can look at it from my point of view and see it one way and it's express, I cry like a baby when I listen to those words, man. And I get into that choreography. I feel myself doing those jumps. I feel myself ripping off that, 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 that just that conformity and being comfortable in my own freaking skin and taking back my personal power. And I cry, I, I go into an ugly cry when I watch this. But if, if, if that's not your experience, you could look at that and go, the boy's crazy, man. He's just, you know, he's possessed by the devil. We, we, we need to take him out, whoop that out of him. You know, what, what the hell's going on here? You know, so you, I'll post it on my page and see what, see what people's reactions are because it's always different, but yes. So just okay. another example. So let's get to the class and your experiences. Okay. Yeah. I would love to, uh, uh, because I, I recognize what you're saying there in regards to uh, discipline, something that I've never, never actually looked into. Uh, you well, know, I need the discipline. I mean, I, I need the discipline right now for what I'm doing. I am extremely disciplined and my, I've been reprimanded by one of my teachers. I have no problems with it. I'm fine with the discipline and the structure and stuff like that, but I'm comfortable in my own skin. They, they don't try to control me the way the, the entertainment industry, the way the ballet world did that. They, right. they don't do that. It's a, it, there's, there's a big, big difference there. Well, so several of you that are watching now may, may recall that I, I have had a couple of experiences with Lisa Risingberry with the five elements soul retrieval ritual. And like I said, one, one of those uh, brought in some pretty big energies for me. And so 
uh, you created a class that we we are that I am experiencing, and I want to thank you for that class. That the class is right now full. So if you find yourself interested, uh, all the information will be in the show more section of this video. You can contact Lisa and um, try it on for size for yourself. I highly recommend, however, having the uh, five element soul retrieval ritual done with Lisa first. That's my own personal recommendation um, because you know, I, I had some really interesting experiences and you've done it now for me. Did we do it three times? I, I think I think so. I think I it's think, been three. Yeah. yeah, I think it is three. <laughs> and but now I am you are teaching uh, a group of us how to perform this ritual for ourselves on ourselves for ourselves, which is something I I feels very empowering to me. And um, I'm loving the uh, I'm loving the everything so far that we've learned. And so we've only had the one one class so far, and it's a total of I think six. Is that right? Total of six yeah. classes. Okay. And did you already have a date on the new one? Um, that well, I the only time I have available are, are Wednesdays. So you know it, it would have to be like um, on Wednesdays after our show. <laughs> which would be like, you know, uh, you know, around two o'clock that, that, right. that works for me. And when, when I, you know, I, I need a minimum of four people to start that. I have a couple people that, that say they kind of might've might, might be interested, you know? Um, so. All right. So, so, let, so let you haven't in. set that in, in stone yet as for the second class. Mm -hmm. Um, but I wanted to share with everyone that I really am enjoying. Like I said, we, we've only had the first class and let me see. I, I've, I've been keeping track. And now, of course, I don't have it right here in front of me. Um, I, I, I have already uh, completed quite a few of my recitations of my mantra, I want you to know. Well, and you know, and I, and I want to add for you, you know, as a student that the mantra recitation, the nine breaths of purification and, and the meditation that I'll be teaching on Friday, that in of itself trains you to master your mind learning any you know the preliminary practices for 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 this is really preliminary practices for life but now preliminary practices to master your mind um and you know and the the five elements ritual just gives you teaches you focus and attention um and it does help you to uh, pull all these soul pieces that have been lost to help you master your mind that's the goal of anything that you do, is to be a genuine human being, to be happy, healthy, and balanced so that you can obtain total liberation. Well, I love, I, you know, I, I was sharing with you when we got together, when we very first got together this morning before we ever turned the camera on and went live, that I have have found myself in this, um, uh, it's a very different state for me. I, I don't, I'm not triggered. I'm not, I don't have, and, I, and I, I, I think I'd like to attribute it to some of what you're speaking on in regards to that discipline. I've been doing this every morning now with the nine breaths of purification and the recitation of the mantra. So, so far, that is what I've been doing, but it's also sort of meditative practice for me as I'm, I'm, I'm also creating as I'm doing that. So I'm, 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 I'm giving my hands something to do. Are you using uh, your mala? I, I am, I am, really? I have, I have it, I have it right here. I have awesome. it right here. Awesome. And so, yeah, um, mine, mine is a little different. I think it was created in terms of, uh, for, beauty rather than function as as some of the beads that are there for beauty are not counted um, mine's the same to... way those are called uh my mine's a, i have a it's 108 so it's a correct mala but it was made in tibet by monks so it's a little it's not it's not a big one to go around the neck it, you know but it has 109 this this being the 109 feet but i have spacers too um and they're they're not counted 
you know, right. they're, they're, oh, they're okay. actually there, they're, they're actually there to break it up into one, two, three, four quarters. So if you only want to do one fourth of a round, which I, I think is ridiculous, you know, because I, I can't remember, did I stop here? Did I stop here? So if I don't have time to say something 108 times, I just don't bother doing it. Right. I, I don't, I don't use the spacer. So I just, when, when I'm counting and I get here, I, I just go whoop and I go up three beads and I start. That's what I've been doing too. Yeah, then you're fine. That's what I've been doing too. So just, you're right, just the very act. So we started that on Friday morning. Today is Wednesday. And, you know, and again, rather than, you know, okay, so this is something new for me. I, you know, rather than judge it or try to label it or anything like that, I'm just going with it. And it's, it's really quite nice at the moment. So um, I, I have to say that I'm really enjoying the class. I'm looking forward to Friday's class. And I highly recommend that, you know, if you're interested, contact Lisa and she'll do a second class. Oh, I love that. Uh, Jennifer Brown, who is also in the class with us. Um, so she's enjoying the class also. Neat experiencing, neat experiences, journaling, and so much sleep recall, experiencing healing and wholeness, plus a lot of detox. Yeah, I have to agree. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That that goes that that's only beginning. And when when yeah. you got we're we're gonna actually learn how to perform the earth element aspect of that ritual on Friday. That's when the real detox thing begins. <laughs> Awesome. So, so, so Jennifer, it sounds like we need to pick up on that water intake. I, I'm actually talking to myself here, <laughs> just to be clear. Um, yeah, that's awesome. Uh, and she said that she's making her own mala. Uh, uh, so she's using, you know, stones and crystals. Way to go. That's, yeah, that's awesome. awesome. I'm not talented like that, but for people who are, that's the way to do it. You know, get, get your own 108 and get a big bead for the top, you know, make, making that 109 and make your own crystals and, and do, do your own mala. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's, that's awesome. So, so if you find yourself in drawn and interested in uh, learning a, a bit of a, a practice and learning to, like I said, I would highly recommend uh, contacting Lisa to have the ritual done with her uh, for the experience as well. But if you're interested in the class and being able to do this uh, for yourself at any time, um, then this class is, you know, like I said, I really feel like I'm I'm getting a lot out of it and we haven't even really delved into it yet. So, so I, and I appreciate the, all the handouts and the links that you sent to us too. You're welcome. You're welcome. So that's awesome. And um, thank you guys all for coming and joining us. And uh, you know, uh, I did see where we had a little bit of a disruption in the, uh, and this is going to happen. Thanks everybody for keeping it very high brow and above board in the chat. I'm, I'm learning how to, how to kick somebody out if we need to. So random, oh. random well, passing. You know, it's a controversial topic that we were talking about. So right. people but, can be very bold behind the keyboard sometimes. And, you know, well, the, you know, I'm under the, I'm under my, I, I get monitored all the time anyway, just because of the, you know, the topics, you know, freeing yeah. oneself, coming into the truth of who you are, uh, is a dangerous, uh, you know, you know, folks that are really, really, really in the know, know that this is where it's at. So I get monitored for things like that anyway. So I'm not surprised, but I wanted to thank everyone for their patience in regards to that. Um, and I, I did see, I want you guys to know, I did see some of the comments in, in the room. I see them all. And I, I agree, I would agree that part of part of what is coming out is for, so that everyone can see what uh, what is going on. I really do feel like um, that is what where we are in these moments. All becomes transparent yeah. now. As a That's what the apocalypse is. It's the lifting of the veil. Yep. So that we all and get. But, to see. but once once the once this time period of the lifting of the veil is over. Because let's face it, that was really, you know, the lifting of the veil to see what the Piscean age was about. 
that's happening now. So we can see what was occurring and what, and we're still in that threshold of going in, you know, from the age of Pisces into the age of Aquarius. So we're still in that threshold of the apocalypse of seeing what's currently going on right now. Cause let's face it, we're not in, we're, we're not, we're not living the age of Aquarius yet. Not you know? yet. We're, no. we're living the age of Pisces, beginning of it. but we, that, that uh, lifting of the veil, once that's done, then we have to go into, you know, kind of, I mean, we're, we're not going to be privy of the privilege of that information unless, you know, you're, uh, we're going to be the creators eyes of it. it, eyes to see and ears to, to hear in it, you know, and we'll, we'll, it, it's just, yeah, I'm not going to say any more about that. Yeah, no, I, no, I love the way the, what you said though, because the truth of the matter is because, because all bets are off now, it is, it's, it's time for us to realize the truth of who we are. And exactly. Again, begin creating from a very yes. conscious position. We have the power in the palm of our hands and most people don't even know it. And it, it exists within our heart and most people don't know how to access it. Right. And that and that's why we we are not fully in the age of Aquarius right now. Yep. No, but the, so well it is my hope through all of these conversations that we can bring what heretofore has been called the woo-woo, metaphysical, hidden, occult knowledge into the light of day. Because truth, truth be known, that's where it needs to be. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, so. And, what, well, what's so all, and I just want to say one more thing. Once all that information is out and, and the woo-woo is no longer woo-woo and people aren't afraid of it and they aren't seeing, you know, the, you know, the, just, they're, they're, they're not going to be focused only on the negativity, okay? Once we get past that, then we go into a whole new experience that is just, in my opinion, amazing. And I, I, I hope I see the beginning of it in my lifetime. I, 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 think, I think we can. I, I, I think we can. Well, I'll, I'll be honest with you. That's, <laughs> that is the playground that I am in the midst of trying to create here. That is, you know, I want no hostages on my journey. I want, I only desire to play with those who are desirous of becoming conscious to the truth of who they are in all ways, shapes, and forms. And what now with that knowledge, with that um, knowing and learning how to uh, direct my focus and attention in ways that I wish that's the playground that I'm that I want to play in and me too that's I'll play the, with you <laughs> good I'm so glad no and, this, and and that's and I'm, I'm not I'm not I am not interested in trying to say you're not doing it right or you're that's not the way this works at least not no, for me not and for me so not for me we're all going to the same place but we're gonna some, like I said, some people are going to go kicking and screaming. Some are going to go willingly, but we're all going to get there and we're going to be okay. Everything's yep. going to be fine. There is no worries, um, but we will all, we all need to find our own path. We need to find our own niche and, and stay out of the fear. Don't, don't, yep. don't feed the fear monster. Don't well, that's why, I, like I said, I love talking with you because you do have some great puzzle pieces on offer. And the fact that you uh, are willing to share your knowledge uh, in the way that you are. Well, thank um, you. I, I know, you know, not everybody will agree with me. I don't expect people to agree with me. I want people to not agree with me because hopefully I will trigger you into expanding your mind and maybe, you know, look, looking at a different point of view or, or looking at a different avenue. You know, I'm not everybody's cup of tea and I'm not going to try to be. You know, I'll, I'll be sweet to some people and I'll be bitter to others. And that's just fine with me. You know, that's, that's, that's what makes the world go around. And that's what makes us grow and push us out of the box, put, push us to go beyond the five senses. And Right. Well, to be quite frank, you and I, th there's a lot about the way things uh, we you and I view things that are, are quite different. And yet we, we still manage exactly. to have great conversations. Know. Exactly. You know, Part I, of that I is because I, I think neither one of us are requiring the other to see things exactly, exactly. the way we see things. I want people to see the things exactly the way I see. Because it's not ever going to happen, is it? No, 
Jesus. No, and it shouldn't. It can't. No. You don't have it's not meant to. No. And I'm in competition with no one. Right. Except mm -hmm. myself, which is a, something else the dance in, in, in industry taught me to be. You're only in competition with the person you see in the mirror. You can't compete with everybody else. Someone's always going to be bigger and better than you are. Give it up, you know, just compete with yourself. So, you know, I competed for, for parts, but I, I competed with myself to get those parts. I only focused on myself. And so right. as a spiritual person, I'm in competition with no one. Yeah. Just doesn't matter to me. I'm happy. Well, in my thank you so day. much for this very impromptu chat. Yeah, it worked and, out kind of good not knowing what we were going to talk about. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I and 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 actually you helped me quite a bit because I I too felt a bit triggered when you brought it up. Um, because I you I had seen it. It. you're like, oh no, I don't, I don't want to go there. And I'm like, what? You don't want to go there. And I'm the big bold, bold one, you know? <laughs> well, because there's so, you know, there's still so much going on and so much being hidden in. And, 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 you know, and it is, it, everybody has to come to it in their own timing and they will. I know that they will. We, all of us sort of, uh, you know, uh, that terminology nobody really likes, but it's really so apt that waking up to there's there's different levels of different things that someone will wake up to and before they, you know, there'll be the first thing. And then that just starts cascading into more and more and more. The more open I found myself to hearing another point of view, stepping outside of the way I looked at a thing and taking it knowing that well if you look at this that looks like a straight line yeah all right yep Bump -ba -da -da. it's Bump -ba -da -da. not it's not it's magic it's woo i know right uh so i know that might sound really silly and kind of dumb but it's the same thing i could if i'm only seeing it from this angle then all i see is a thin white line until and you can't appreciate I, the totality until i look at it from a different perspective and that's the way it is and 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 everything is that way so thank you so much for uh bringing your perspective and sharing it with us and so listen this will be up on uh rising frequencies youtube channel a little later on we will have in the show more section, I'm going to put the Darren Brown, also that deleted singing from Dogma, which I just absolutely adore about what hell is, and um, a link to the imposter, along with all the links of how to get in touch with Lisa Risingberry if you find yourself drawn to or interested in uh, any of your offerings, actually. I highly recommend the uh, five element soul retrieval and also the class. Like I said, I've only had one, but wow. <laughs> so we'll be back together again two weeks from today. We will be live. And during that conversation, we're going to be pulling my Lisa in as our guest. So Lisa Flamino Rush will be joining us two weeks from today. And we're going to delve a little farther into. Um, actually the truth of who we are but and how we value ourselves so getting comfortable in our own skins and being okay with everything we see sense and feel is 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 a good place to leave this one and we're going to go a little farther in the next one <laughs> thank you dear thank so much. you much love to you and everyone thank mm -hmm. you for joining us Mwah. next time